let's talk about Brock Purdy though for a second. What coming out off of a bye week, obviously, you know, a couple tough weeks, few tough weeks. Really, the Browns game, I think, was the anomaly game. If you look across his whole career, the Browns game was was different than the rest. That one, he was basically bad for almost the whole game. Okay. Mm -hmm. That game, I think sometimes when when you take averages of of players or or what have you you take like their best game you take their worst game you remove them and then you take the rest and like this is kind of who they are yeah. if i'm doing that for brock purdy his worst game would have been the browns game i'm removing that from the equation when i'm trying to evaluate him and then his best game is i don't know whatever Cow game you want Cowboys to probably cowboy okay you can remove that and then take the rest of his games who is he really i, I think what you saw the last two weeks against minnesota what you saw against the Bengals, that is more in line with who he is. Obviously, he played well for three quarters, then he didn't at the end. But, you know, we talked about it last week. For me, the most concerning thing about Brock is that, not that he played bad the last two weeks, it's that he's been the same player, and now teams are just picking off the plays that have always been there. That is what is concerning to me. But overall, Brock Purdy has essentially been the same player to me the last two weeks that he's been the first five, four weeks, really, if we're taking away the Dallas and the Cleveland game, uh, oddly enough, back-to-back -back games. But when you look at it, what are your expectations for Brock, whether it's going into this week or the rest of the season, what would you like to see and, and what would you expect from him down the stretch? Well, I think that's really it for me for Brock Purdy. I think what I've learned so far, again, it's, it's really early for Brock Purdy. I need to see mm -hmm. at least another double the amount of games he's played so far, and then I can probably get a better glimpse of who Brock Purdy is. He has played, what, six, what's the total? I don't even know. It's like 16 games, right, with playoffs oh and God, everything. Yeah. Right, so let's double that amount before I give a definitive of this who's, who Brock Purdy is. But so far what I've seen from Brock Purdy is that he can win you some ball games. When everything else is going well, when the, when you got the run game, everyone's healthy, the defense is performing like they should be performing, top five. Brock Purdy can definitely orchestrate that offense, run Kyle Shanahan's system, and do what needs to be done to win ball games. The question that we haven't seen an answer for yet is when the game's on the line, when the pressure's on Brock Purdy, if you're down a, a player or two, can Brock Purdy put the team on his back and at least just – take what's there and not turn the ball over at least just do that that my expectation for Brock Purdy is in this situation if it comes up again and there's a good <clears throat> a good reason to think that that might happen against the Jaguars um is that uh, just take what the defense is giving you and don't turn the ball over you don't have to be the hero right you don't have to make a spectacular play let these weapons do that for you just take what the defense is giving you and don't turn the ball over. That's my expectation for Brock Purdy. In these clutch moments, can you be clutch? And when I say be clutch, I don't mean, you know, throw an amazing touchdown pass to win the game. What I mean is don't lose the game. And at the end of game, like, I don't I don't give wins and, and losses to quarterbacks exclusively. I'm not one of those guys that does that. So his, all, the, all the losses are, are team losses. All the wins have been team wins. But... At the end of the game, Brock Purdy has contributed to the losses over the last two weeks. Substantially, last week, you can't turn the ball over three times and, and, and expect to win the game. So the key for Brock Purdy is just take what the defense gives you. Don't try to be the hero. Don't turn the ball over. Be that clutch guy, the closer that we need you to be. That's my expectations. That's what I'm hoping for from Brock Purdy. Yeah, I'm I'm actually right there with you. It's To me, it's the turnovers. That's what – just don't put the ball in harm's way. He, since he's come into the league, he's been bottom third of the league in turnover-worthy plays. He has to clean those things up. I don't expect you to go out and be a world beater, I, especially not year two in your career. That's just an unfair expectation. Right. There's not many guys like Patrick Mahomes <laughs> floating around that are coming into year two and are winning MVPs and doing all those crazy things. I don't expect you to be that guy week in and week out. Now, there are going to be times throughout this season where you are going to have to go win a game. And so far, in those couple of chances you've had, you haven't done it. But that doesn't mean he can't do it. I would expect him to just play better in those scenarios. Don't let that be the time where the game gets away from you. But really, man, just protect the ball. Protect the ball. If this team doesn't win a Super Bowl, don't be the reason that they don't win a Super Bowl. 
Okay. Be the reason that do, do your job and let the chips fall where they may. Let's look back on it and say, Hey, the reason they didn't win was because, you know, Kyle Shanahan missed something down the stretch or the offensive line couldn't hold up or, you know what? The defense never turned it around. Just don't be the reason that they lose. You don't have to be the reason they win either. Just don't be the reason that they lose these games. At this right. point, protect the football. Uh, go out, make plays a little bit with your legs. Do some things off script the way that you've been doing, but you don't have to be the hero week in and week out either. That's an unfair expectation. Just don't lose them games. And that's where I'm at with Brock. Look, I, I've said it since last year that I think Brock Purdy is better than Jimmy Garoppolo, and I still yes. feel that way. Yeah, I do too. The 49ers got to the Super Bowl with Jimmy Garoppolo. They were a quarter away from winning it, and they never asked Jimmy Garoppolo to be the man to win the game. I mean, they did at the end with that one pass, right? And he missed it. But in general, their whole path there, Jimmy was just a facilitator, a game manager. And that's really all that Brock Purdy should be asked to do this year at this point in his career. So when you're in those situations where your back's against the wall, put the ball in the hands of your weapons and let them do their thing. Just don't turn the ball over. Don't lose the game. Like Jesse said, that's the main thing that I expect from Brock Purdy moving forward. Yeah, most certainly. And, and I think what, what I think has happened through the course of this season and the three weeks that he and this team are coming off of is I feel like everything's been kind of level set and we can have realistic conversations about not only Brock Purdy, but this team in general, this team still is good enough to potentially win a Super Bowl. And I think that Brock with this team, if everything's going right, fully healthy, what have you, is good enough to get there. I, I still believe those things. That what's happened the last three weeks has not detoured me from that. I don't think that he, I've always thought that he'll never be the guy that's going to be able to carry a team long term. Okay, when you start stripping away talent. And maybe I'm wrong about that. But one thing I wouldn't expect is that even if he becomes that guy, I wouldn't expect him to be that guy in year two. That is an unfair expectation. So what do the 49ers do and, and what do they need to do to get back on the right track? Well, now that we've seen how bad it can get for this team, we also know how good it can be for this team. Health plays a part in that. But discipline, missed tackles play a part in that. Uh, Brock Purdy just protecting the ball plays a part in that. Kyle Shanahan figuring out a way to get somebody else involved plays a part in that. It's not a Brock Purdy problem. This is a team problem. This is a team game. And if the expectation is that, oh, well, this team wins and loses with Brock Purdy, look, a lot of people said that they, you know, oh, the 30 points, Purdy, Purdy for 30, and all those other things. Well, yeah, if the expectation is that you think they're going to score 30 every week and Brock Purdy's the reason that they're winning all these games, well, then it's a rude awakening when they lose three straight and they score 17. But if the expectation is, hey, I know that this team is really, really good. I know that Brock can play really good football and they can win with them. But I don't think he's a guy that necessarily in year two should be a guy that can or will carry the team then it's not that big of a deal when you see the three weeks that you saw. This is kind of what was par for the course. So it's all about managing those expectations. And I just feel like these last couple of weeks has brought everybody back a little bit. We can have real conversations about the team. We can have real conversations about Brock Purdy. And we can move forward and know that it's going to be a, a tough road ahead of the 49ers. But it is a road that they can certainly hoe and get to the Super Bowl, in my opinion. And they got to do it as a team. They got to do it as yes. a team. I, I'm honestly, if there, if I had to si single out one thing that would stop the 49ers from winning the Super Bowl, it's not Brock Purdy. It's this offensive no. line. It's the yeah. offensive line. That would be my biggest concern. Well, so, certainly. Yeah, I agree with you, man.